So good morning everyone. Welcome to this uh, Master of Architecture final jury of Immersion Technologies and Design postgraduate program. I'm Edith Ardine. I'm joined by our co-director Milad Shokatbaksh and we are very happy um, to be holding this event. Um, our Master of Architecture students are coming to the end of their journey of let's say around nine months or so, and they will be presenting their uh, dissertations that span uh, various scales of investigation, material, local material, architecture, urbanism, and ecology. And we're also very happy to be joined by our esteemed jury members. Um, we have a great lineup here. Eduardo Tibuzi, uh, design director from AKT2 who is going to run the keynote lecture later this afternoon for those of you who are online, also who is uh, going to join uh, here in the lecture hall. We have Xavier de Castellier. Good to be back, Xavier. See you. Uh, Xavier is head of design from Hassel Studio. Uh, we have Anna Font, recently completed PhD, to be Dr. Font, and... Uh, Dr. Font. <laughs> um, she's a unit tutor here in Projective Cities, also in RCA. And we're joined by Laura uh, Narvaez Zertucci, uh, partner, urban design department in Foster and Partner. We're very happy to have you guys. And let's just jump right into And of into course, this. our very own Michael Weinstock is here with us. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's start. First group. Um, good morning. Uh, we are hydrosocial, meaning a community based uh, around a water uh, supply system. Uh, the increase in global temperatures accelerates glacial melt, leading to disruptions in the ecosystem, threatens freshwater supplies, and intensifies extreme weather events. Uh, one such biome is located in the tundra region of the northern Himalayas, known as the Spiti Valley. It is uh, classified as a cold desert due to its high altitude and position within a rain shadow region. It is observed that the glacial cover in this region has reduced by 13%, in the last decade and is predicted to deplete further. Uh, the valley experiences sub-zero temperatures most of the year with reduced road access in the winters. Uh, their economy thrives only during the summer months. Uh, all the villages are situated on the banks of the river Spiti, which serves as a lifeline for the people. However, the water sources have started to dry up due to rapid glacial melt and excessive evaporation. Uh, we looked at five most populated settlements in the region and chose Kaza, uh, the biggest settlement in the valley as a case for our study. During winter, the region experiences complete snow cover, limiting activities. Uh, spring marks the peak of the thriving occupations, whereas summers face water scarcity due to ineffective water collection and distribution methods. In Kaza, recent trends such as increased tourism, shifts in crop choices, and the adoption of more water-demanding construction materials have further amplified the existing water crisis. To address challenges related to the desertification, rapid glacial melt, and construction methods, our proposal involves creating a self-sustaining water system. Uh, this system will integrate strategic urban development practices with uh, traditional construction techniques in, a, in, a, in an adaptive manner. Uh, the project unfolds in two phases. Firstly, concentrating on water collection, preservation, and distribution to establish a hydrological network. Subsequently, this network evolves into a socio-economic system, shaping an urban framework, meeting water supply needs, and addressing economic challenges. To facilitate the proposal, a framework which includes experiments on scales ranging from materials to a global or an urban scale was established. And to develop the hydrological network, we firstly focused on locating the optimum possible sites for collection, preservation, and distribution modules in the urban fabric of Kaza. Uh, the study of the urban fabric for its natural terrains, water resources, and existing development clearly indicated the locations of the modules. Uh, the approach to collect water begins when winter's snow accumulation transforms into uh, collected glacial melt and surface runoff during spring. This collected water is preserved in modules within the settlement, and then this reserved water is distributed during the summer months for domestic and agricultural purposes. Uh, each typology was uh, derived based on its location and the main function that it serves. Type A, located on the highest altitude, mainly for collection of precipitation. 
Type B, located near the farmlands to collect snow and distribute water to the agricultural fields. And Type C, located within the existing settlement to preserve water and distribute it among the households. To design these architectural interventions, to design these architectural interventions, we explored the use of locally obtained construction materials and focused on the concept of reusability through the use of interlocking blocks. We, exposed local, we explored local crops and agricultural waste in cre creating a building block with a functional gradient inspired by a trom wall. It aims for water repellency, thermal resistance, and strength to withstand snow load and its own weight. <coughs> To achieve these properties, we systematically developed and tested material compositions. Experiments involved analyzing four to six samples, identifying optimal compositions. Based on physical experiments, a digital experiment with functionally graded block was carried out. Thermal heat capacity was analyzed and blocks with greater length in relation to the temperature difference exhibited better thermal performance. The block, designed as a rectangular cuboid, used adjusted vertex elevations to create frictional forces, forming an inherent interlocking system. The following images show the process we used for making of the block. After producing the physical prototypes, we compared our final results with the digital prototype. The FG block was then compared with, con with conventional fired bricks and cement concrete, wherein it exhibited lower water consumption, a diminished carbon footprint, a marginally extended production period compared to fired clay bricks, and heightened labor intensity, providing enhanced employment prospects. Following material development, our next emphasis was on constructing elements specifically designed to facilitate collection and preservation for which we researched on snow fence for accumulation of snow, cascades for diversion of glacial melt water, and embankment to avoid rapid evaporation. Further, experiment on snow fence started with multi-objective optimization with maximum porosity and structural stability as objectives. We achieved porosity of 33% in the fence. As we are working with material with compressive strength, we then reduced porosity to increase strength, which led to 22% porosity. The two different results were then simulated with snow particles to obtain volume of water that can be harvested from snow fence. As a result, the fence with lower porosity had proved to harvest more water as particle simulation was higher on the fence. Our second small-scale research was based for cascades to divert and converge water to a, to a storage tank. Various angles and overlap distances were evaluated as a result of which we obtained a range for moving further. The third experiment was done to understand the threshold of our agro-based building block. Major function of the block was to cover water storage tank and evaluate, and evaluate span of the arch. We also started to work with arch as based on research. It helps trap heat due to less surface area and works well with compression. All this initial research comes together as a composite architectural design intervention which initiated with analyzing the elevation, slope, and catchment. Then overlaid each to identify the proposal site area, type A at the highest elevation and type B near the agricultural land. Typology A sits on higher elevation for harvesting and preserving water. This unit consists of the building elements studied above. Experiments on this typology is focused on developing methods for water harvesting during the summer using glacier melt water and winter with snow accumulation and preserving the water for longer run. An experiment was conducted to optimize embankment by minimizing solar radiation and maximizing the curvature of preservation tanks. Different out outcomes with varying curvatures were tested and the most effective designs were selected for water volume quantification. Several cascade and embankment curvatures were evaluated using particle analysis. Phenotypes were chosen for testing, and the third iteration captured the highest number of snow particles. Diverted glacier melt water also converged effectively towards the storage tank. With 35% of diverted water being collected, the third iteration was selected for implementation in typology A. The working mechanism of typology A is shown with run of water collected in the tank. Typology B sits on lower elevation for harvesting and preserving water to supply agricultural fields. Typology B, in addition to water preservation, integrates multiple functions within its form, which was developed to foster communal engagement by providing a space for production of agro-based bricks, contributing to the economic development of Gaza. During the winter, the space is utilized for snow harvesting and brick manufacturing. In the summer, as a storage facility and preserving raw materials. 
In the experiment on preser preservation tank was carried out with various sets of ob objectives. It was developed with multiple curvature to denote various functions. We achieved outputs with various ranges of curvature and selected further to quantify water volume. Its outputs were analyzed based on water volume capacity and amount of agricultural land it serves. The working mechanism of type LGB is shown with preservation area and multiple spaces for public engagement. Within this structure, the volume of water stored would suffice agricultural land for majority of summer months. Typology C sits on the community as a social structure combined with dis distributing water. Development of this module was inspired from traditional water area, preservation area found in regions of Indian subcontinent where water distribution is linked to social context. Developed around water spouts, social activities are further linked to central water collection area. During the summer, it serves as water distribution uh, interve intervention, while in winter, the covered building cater to recreational needs of the community. To optimize the typologies orientation, experiments were carried out to minimize wind flow and reducing summer solar exposure to central water outlet and to prevent evaporation and maximizing winter solar exposure on buildings for increased heat gain. Type C's structure features a water storage unit beneath the plinth equipped with an outlet that supplies water to central fountain area. With design of all type logis, kit of parts were introduced and each module integrates thermal and compressive blocks strateg strategically chosen to ensure stability and strength. Activities are mapped out for functions based on various models. Above research architectural intervention is further looked upon in fa urban fabric to develop hydrological network. For type C, we manually identified the open sites in between the settlement and then ran an evolutionary algorithm to generate a network from type A to type C's. Considering slopes and lowest possible points on terrain with supply radius as objectives, the primary network was devised which has three main branches and we selected the best performing uh, solutions. Following the generation of distributing network, a post-analysis was carried out, calculating the serving capacity of type C. Based on serving radius, the values were remapped to formula stress index. The distribution of water volume among different typologies revealed an unequal allocation based on the stress index. As shown in the graph, the minimum serving amount for some typologies remained around 100 liters. This observation led us to consider an alternative approach designing the city around pre-established hydrological network. Uh, this new method or approach was more specific to the naturally existing topography and uh, development of hydrological network prior. Uh, the town is distinctly divided into two parts by the tributary. Uh, based on density, we chose the eastern part which was, cho uh, which was close to the agricultural fields and is the oldest part of the town. Uh, the town was divided into four parts by the existing roads. Each zone was analyzed for density of natural catchments to determine the best locations for type C buildings. This approach allowed us to consider the topography and create a more sustainable water supply system. Uh, to generate a network around the type C's, the catchment lines were rationalized um, and the experiment setup was to optimize for having minimum road lengths, equal plot areas and minimum distance from type, uh, type A, one type to another. A range of solutions were obtained from the optimization to establish the road network, uh, which were further analyzed for shortest walks and between a centrality. Uh, the best performing solutions were chosen and further parcellation was carried out with the various plot sizes ranging from 10 meters to 45 meters as frontage. Uh, with the most optimal plot sizes, a weighted system was derived to further determine the land use for the fabric. Uh, typology C, row network and shortest walks were considered for the weighing system. With the most, uh, depending on the land use uh, results, adequate number of buildings uh, which can be proposed for local residences and their commercial activities were obtained. Again, for this uh, network, stress index was calculated with the serving radius in mind. The new approach led to a fair distribution of water in the whole town compared to the old approach or the process. After optimizing the hydrological network, the next step involved designing housing and commercial units based on adaptive traditional principles for socio-economic development. 
Analyzing traditional planning, we devised adaptive housing for extreme weather conditions. Seasonal design included enclosed spaces in winter and well-ventilated areas in summer. Traditionally, units followed a grid and load-bearing structure. These grids were then translated into cells for the design proposal. A variation in the configuration could determine the type of spaces. A number of typologies were derived depending on the spatial requirement. Contextual adjacency was also analyzed for further steps. Set rules defined function sizes, location based on extreme weather and occupancy. Prioritized functions were inspired by the traditional housing system. The parameters that were set to run the experiment were mainly environmental, while a few were economy related, specifically the parameters that required access to the road. In order to run the experiment, varied site conditions were determined. These conditions challenged the environmental as well as the economic parameters. A multi-objective experiment generated optimized <coughs> Outcomes for diverse site conditions, selected typologies met criteria for past thermal comfort and functional requirements. Interchanging design cells formed the housing layout, resulting in multiple outcomes situated on the site. Three sites were then assessed for cluster-oriented design. First, the first site uh, located near Type C required higher density for the influx of people attracted to the increased activities. For the second site, cluster away from primary roads and the Type C feature lower density with more green spaces, while the third site demanded maximum frontage which was initiated to capitalize on the accessibility for commercial units near the main road. Summarizing the overall urban layout, inclusive of our interventions in the hydrological network system and community development initiatives. The holistic nature of this development plan is evident as it integrates various activities, highlighting water collection during summer and gathering for festivals during the winter. With analysis and planning of the old town, a hydrological distribution network was proposed capable of serving maximum housing cluster. Old Casa undergoes a, a replanning process and the new layout deviates from the existing fabric. Yet its centralized <coughs> social infrastructure and decentralized land use plan fostered a self-sufficient settlement. This, uh, this self-sufficiency relies on the hydrological network's development and the socio-economic chain that it facilitates. This holistic development envisions a sustainable and long-term <coughs> transformation. Finally, to summarize, the project highlighted equitable water distribution potential in similar geographical regions through a hydrological network and centralized social infrastructure. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations for, uh, for your presentation. It's really, very really nice. Um, I think I just wanted to, um, well, first of all, um, I found it very interesting because it's starting with a, an infrastructural problem, uh, which um, it's always an interesting way of actually deriving your um, architecture. And in this case, you've got a topography that sort of helps you. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the uh, Kanat system in Saudi somehow. Um, so the, the um, distribution of the network you've done really proves that um, the infrastructure, resolving the infrastructure is a very important part of the equation. Um, and the second point I wanted to sort of highlight is the, uh, the choice of the structural system is also quite interesting because it, it is compatible with the uh, snow loads and uh, provides, you know, obviously efficiency there. And the stereotomic approach that you chosen for the module is also quite, uh, quite nice. Um, so I guess my question is, I've got twofold. Is, um, the first is actually um, the choice of exposing the system uh, to water and, you know, and the issues that they might provide in terms of, um, let's say, um, durability. And so why, why you chosen to do that? Um, and, the, uh, and the second point, I think, is how do you guarantee uh, an equitable distribution of water in terms of in, in 50 or 100 years time when the snow and the water might decrease. So that, that, that sort of uh, relationship with the growth and the expansion and the diminishing of water, how do you deal with that? that would be. Uh, 
um, for the first question, thank you for the question, uh, which was more of durability of our bricks. So in the span of our MSc phase where we did material research, we tested out our water repellency on our bricks. So there it helped us to like clarify how uh, this brick can be durable in certain amount of time. Of course, it might have some drawbacks or uh, in the longer term, but in that span, we had some results which proved our brick to be durable for a certain amount of time. And for a second, uh, about, um, so we thought about, th about that. So our site is based on glacier melt uh, river side. So based on this, we have certain other similar terrain which has, has glacier uh, lines in other, uh, let's say in 500 meters or, or certain uh, distance. So our proposal aims to create uh, this kind of collection harvesting near those reasons. So in the future, if the settlement expands or is, um, if there is a water crisis, this uh, similar typology A, which we have water harvesting uh, unit, those mo model could be applied in those reasons, which might help also to deal with those kind of situation further. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Um, that was a lot of information, really fast, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes hard to take in. Um, so I do have a few questions for you, short questions actually. Um, so did, did any of you visit the town? Did you ever been no, there? Before the thesis, like... You did? Yeah, so yes. all three of you or...? No, no, no. I, I have you been, have yes. been, okay, 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 okay. so that's, that, that's good. Um, so you, first on the materiality, you went through it very quickly. Right. Um, um, uh, so, what materials did you, in the end, did you choose, and why, and how does that connect to the local uh, economy and agriculture? So, so, the materials that have been used are actually all the agro waste that has been produced locally around the Spiti Valley, uh, which includes uh, uh, walnut. walnut shells, uh, the locally available mud, uh, which acts as a binding material and some fibrous crops which, which act as a reinforcement for the uh, brick. So all of this combined mm -hmm. and to create the FGM, the uh, differ differentiating gradient in the uh, brick, we use different proportions of water while mm -hmm. uh, making the brick. So it's all locally sourced and then uh, the people over there will make the bricks. So that uh, helps the economic situation over there. Apart from agriculture, mm -hmm. the waste that is produced over there can be used uh, mm -hmm in building the structures itself. Uh, what are they building currently? Uh, yeah. They are all concrete right now. Concrete. But tradi traditionally, it was all stone and uh, timber. Mm -hmm. But even those, like, uh, they're not available uh, locally there because there are no alpine uh, uh, trees over there, like in the uh, vicinity. But since the present, uh, the conditions there have the agricultural soil and everything, so that soil can be used mm -hmm. um, as the okay. building material. Cool. Um, I've got a question about the urban uh, plan there. I'm a little bit confused because I think you started off saying so that part is the oldest part yes, of the that, that town? Yes, that is out from where the uh, town yeah. grew. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you kind of now, are you wiping it out and putting a new part there? Uh, or? Yes, we're proposing a new uh, Lay urban, layout, yeah. urban layout uh, that can be like this layout can be implemented all over the Spiti Valley if there are new towns coming mm -hmm. uh, to go back to your questions if there are new towns coming in you can use the same method or the uh, process to expand the town it's mainly so, generated in and around the hydrological network proposal yeah. interventions that we have proposed but you're kind of demolishing what is there now yes. yeah. it would have been interesting I think if you kind of looked at your system um, it looks quite sophisticated on how to use that and embed it within an existing network, I think, you know. It's a bit of a shame that you said, like, you know, you go for the, the oldest part of town, you're wiping it out, you're putting a new thing in, which is going to be much better, yeah. right? Who knows? Um, so that's just a bit of critique for me. The other thing which I find a shame, and it's good that you have it on that slide, is that you use lots of kind of systems to kind of fine-tune that network and that, 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 that urban proposal. Um, the shame is, like, looking at it now, it looks very homogenic, right? You, you showed me that, oh, yeah, this part is actually, oh, it works like that, that part works like that. But from a kind of a quick view now, looking at a graphic like this, it's very, very homogenic. So that's a kind of, you know, 
a quality that I'm missing there. Mm -hmm. um, I did like the fact that you kind of use these, these water places as more of a, as a social uh, perspective as well. That was great, but um, yeah, the way it looks now, um, that, that's a bit of uh, a shame, I think. But um, yeah, really well done how you kind of went from the very small to the complete urban, I think, in, in one project. That's, that's, that's a huge effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're doing this uh, in line, uh, so I'll continue. Um, no, just picking up on your last comment about maybe the fact that when we look at this image, um, it starts to feel like it's a, a new system, a new project. Um, and I, I think, it, I mean, I, I was really taken and, and I really like how the ideologic system kind of starts emerging from this topography. It seems like even if you are folding the topography line at the beginning, like it's a very subtle kind of move and then progressively it becomes more of an object of a building because it can host a space. All that pr process to me, it's like extremely interesting because you are really intervening into the topography and, and talking about the valley as something that you're activating. And I wonder if this, um, street system could have followed more the line of thought of reconstructing a sort of infrastructural condition of maybe not uh, like um, hosting water, but the opposite, but because you need uh, like higher lands or, you know, like mm -hmm. to continue elaborating on the idea of building this valley from within its own kind of logics. And um, I think that could be, just, just to follow up a little bit with this impression, because I think it's, it's a huge effort that you've done, and, um, and I, I really enjoyed how you were testing everything, were simulating everything, and actually it became increasingly difficult to convey the, the, the contrast of what you need to respond to. So, I mean, it's, it's a really nice work and very rigorous. And uh, this last jump, maybe it's easy to take on it. So just, uh, again, uh, just take it as a something to, to discuss more than a, than a deep criticism. But it feels like you could have continued uh, the logic. And then the idea of typology is not so, um, as types not as uh, different instances, but more as a continuous condition that varies because the condition of the valley varies. Um, and the idea of zonification to me is a bit difficult to understand also within your own proposal because it, it seems like you don't want to look at the valley as zones. You don't want to see the urban and the non-urban. No, like you're trying to be a bit more trans typological and I feel like there was a moment in the research where types took over a little bit too much on that front and then become very much objectualized. So maybe that's... Um, uh, uh, part of it, but anyway, just um, I don't want to extend it more. But just one, one small question: I really didn't understand why the porosity of the unit, like, because I really like the fact that we are looking at this and it has a porosity, it's like millimetrical, and then you take us outwards into like a very large scale. But I didn't really understand why do you need this porosity? Maybe uh, you can answer it. It's, it's a very silly question, and I pass it to Laura. So we were looking at uh, like a system of a trom wall or insulation insulated walls where it has more porosity towards the center or air gaps towards the center. So like a, in, like a single unit that has the porosity which encapsulates the insulation and also works as a structural system in one uh, building block. Maybe that would have been pushed through more than just like a, an, it seems a bit anecdotic right now okay. to me uh, in regards to all this urban kind of system. So mm. just to contrast the, the minute with the large. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I agree, it, there's a lot of information and a lot of work put, it, put into. Um, but I think my, my same thoughts and my same reaction was the one that al it's already been mentioned uh, in this last image. Uh, because it went, I, I really liked so well how you simulated, you've analyzed you know, the unit, how you propose the different typologies. And then when you come to say, okay, we're gonna apply this to the urban, and then you take the old town and I see this image, and I'm kind of saying, ah. So um, from an urban perspective, I think it, it, it seems to me, you know, rather than to have a proposal of a new network, because you're proposing a new infrastructure solution, is to think about uh, retrofitting somehow and improving and your typologies can come into that and I think that that would have been a super nice approach rather than to 
you know, wipe things out and, you know, here's, here's a new system. You can apply this system to the rest of the area, if you wish, as a prototype, or maybe apply one part of the old town, but not the whole thing. So I, w I would have loved to see that somehow. Um, and from your typologies and, and just looking at the plan, it seems like a repetition of houses all over. Um, and somehow, to me, and this is just a small criticism, it lacks of an urban structure as, as an urban you know, feeling to it, and not just filled with houses and some, um, your little uh, donut, forgive me, uh, I forgot the name, uh, the, your system. Types. Your types. Yeah. Types. Yes, uh, and it look, you, know, you could use even the, the sort of a collection of the water with uh, you know, a park, other playgrounds that are different pockets that gives more of a, you know, I don't know the, the character of the place, you've been there. So taking the DNA of the place and embedding it into your design, I think that that's something you could have, you know, think of. And the other one is, I, I like the fact that you, you know, you consider the climate obviously in the different months, but then you sort of put your public space on those collection of, you know, key spaces. And when it snows, you don't have any shade. So, so you know, idea, uh, maybe it snows one month and that's it, I don't know. No, it, it snows for a quite a while. <laughs> but uh, if you see, uh, they, uh, they, it acts as a shade. Uh, All right. Uh, was a render, Talks which, a bit yeah. OK, then, so, then may, yeah. M maybe, because everybody seems to be outside in the, in the snow, which is no, great, in, but in the maybe that doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, elements as, such as that, and I know they're minuscule, but um, one of the aspects that I would just thinking throughout, and I know it's very much focused on this, is the social aspects of how do people live, work here, and then embed that into your prototype, into your spaces, into the plan. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, I think it's a really well done, or really well thorough uh, work you guys did. So uh, I commend you for that, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.